Hello, Professor Leo. This is Matt Ball with Cengage Learning. I've created a MindTap course for you. This will be linked up later today at TCU, and I'll show you how you make those links and get that set up. But this is what the course looks like. You'll see it begins with how to use uh, Stata, the uh, data analysis tool. Uh, there's math remediation. We have chapter one, but then you have the rest of the materials in part one, part two, part three. I'll go ahead and just click in the first part so you can see it. I'll open up chapter two. And whenever you see this little book icon, this is actually the book verbatim word for word what is in uh, the printed text. So I'll open that up so you can see what that looks like. And MindTap, in essence, MindTap is an app-based program where you have all the resources in one place. So here we have the book. Uh, we'll just click on this first. I'll just click in the book, um, Fitted Values and Residuals. Uh, so now we're in the book. And the book can be read to the students. The students at TCU have told me one of the things they really like, sometimes they're very tired, um, uh, but, but they can still listen to the book. So it's read speaker. You have this little icon here. You click on it, and this will read the book to you. Uh, click on the Fitted values and residuals. We assume that the intercept and slope estimates, beta 0 and beta 1, have been obtained for the given sample. So I'll actually read the book to the student. That's what we call read speaker. Now, everything we have is basically powered by these apps over on the right-hand side. So this is read speaker. If I click on it, it'll open up the speaker, and you have your choice, male or female voice, fast, medium, or slow. Sometimes you have English may not be the first language, so they want to have it read a little bit slower. But you can change that. So the other thing we have in here, uh, anytime there's a... a something that's highlighted, if you click on it, I'll just open it, oh, I just closed it, sorry, the full book. Let me click back on that. Fitted so values and residuals. <laughs> we assume that the intercept and slope estimate. Sorry about that. So you click on that, it opens up the, the uh, figure and gives you more information that's with that. So they're all linked together. Um, uh, tables and what have you. Um, at any rate, um, let me get a little more in here. If we highlight it, you can add a note. Uh, if there's a, something you want to look at, um, oh, think of a word I made. Well, we'll take residual. We'll, we can open up the dictionary, uh, full Merriam-Webster's dictionary. It tells them what the definition is. Um, if you, they highlight, they can also add a note. Uh, add a flashcard. If we click on click on Add Note, uh, students say you can say this is on the test. A lot of the students at TCU, uh, well, in particular one student was telling me this is how she takes her notes. She takes them in MindTap, and that way all her all, all of her notes are together. Now you as an instructor can take a note, and you have the option you can click on Share, and that note will then be shared with the rest of the class. So if I click Save. That note will be at the top of the paragraph where the where, where they take the note. Now, if we go over to what's called Study Hub, this is the repository of all the notes students take. If I click on Study Hub, if we go into Notes and Highlights, it'll list every note that we take. Okay, it sees well, we have one note here in Chapter Two, and this is where it is. And there's the note. Now, if we click on this little arrow. This will take us back to, we've already got that page open, but it will take us to the page of the book where we took the note. So that's, uh, I'm going over that really fast. That's Study Hub. So it's a repository for all your notes. Keeps them in one place. Um, and students at TCU have told me this is one of the features that they really like. This and Read Speaker. Now, if we go, um, let me go ahead and close out the book itself. Now we're in the, I should explain this. We're in the learning path of, of the book, which now we're in chapter two. And if we click this little arrow, this takes us back to, we call this the learning path. Everything is here. And you're probably wondering, what is this over here in this area? These are analytics. So you can see where your students are at any time. And since I don't have any students in this particular class, I'm gonna open up the grade book. And so we can take a look at this. So it's some sample reports. So we can see what the analytics look like. And basically, the students can see where they are in the course at any time. And 
they can see where the other students are, but they can't see their names. So if we click on, this is all under the progress app. Let me go into analytics. So the students, if you were to roll over a cursor over it, you would see the student's name. And you see the students, their idea is get to move up and to the right. So students can see the other students, they just can't see their names. So they don't know who they are. So it lets the students know uh, this is the engagement level. Um, you've also got time and course. Um, this lets you know how, how much time they spend on the course. So basically, you'll see all this, usually the first week you see all the students start to register and you see their dots moving up and to the right. If you have any of these dots in this lower left-hand quadrant, these will be your at-risk students that you can identify the first week or two in the class. You don't have to wait for the first test. So you can say, oh, wow. Uh, and you can course correct, maybe send them an email saying, I noticed that you're not spending much time in MindTap. Um, if you continue this trend, you might not do well in the course. And you'll see there's a, there's a correlation between how much time they spend in MindTap and how well they do in the course. So those are the analytics, and those are automatically loaded uh, as students register for your course. I know one professor at TCU, he gives the students 25 points uh, out of, I think there's 525 points for total grade. 25 of those points come from just registering for MindTap in the first week of class. Oh, and by the way, students can register for MindTap uh, at no cost initially for um, one day for every week of the course up to 14 days, which means 16 week course, they have up to 14 days. They can register first day of class without ever having purchased anything. Now, after 14 days, it will lock them out. It will, will not erase their work, but they can't continue until they put in the access code. Again, it does not erase their work. So students on financial aid or something, they don't have to wait for that financial aid check. They can immediately get in. So, And these are all found in what's called the Progress app, which is right here. Now, um, go back into the book. We've already loaded, um, this is Aptly Homework. So um, you may be familiar with uh, one of our products, Aptly. We've integrated all of the Aptly Homework exercises into MindTap. So here it is. Um, um, and I'm sure you know uh, what all this means. I don't. Um, so if we go here, you have the pull-down menus. Um, I'm just going to select the first answer of each one so we can see what that looks like. And then I click grade it now. I believe you probably used Aptly before, you may know how this works. So it tells me, okay, uh, I got one wrong, but it gives you an explanation of what that is. Um, yeah, another one wrong, and it gives me a good explanation. So you can try another version, and this will give you another version to try. So we have all the homework, the homework is actually built into the program, and you'll see it, and there's also problem walkthroughs. Uh, this is, anytime you see this little link, this is a video. Um, there's other exercises. So we have the video links. We have all of this. Now, here is where uh, MindTap gets kind of interesting. Um, again, Math for Meeting Nation. Oh, let me scroll down here. You have advanced topics, your appendices. You have more information in the appendices on math. So we have all this material in here. Now, here's how you can customize the course and, and you may want to do this in some cases. You can add material to this learning path. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just show you one example of this. You click on the plus sign. You can add stuff in the book or in the learning path. So we're just going to add an activity. And this activity, say you have a video, and we're just going to put a video from YouTube on here. So I click on um, YouTube video, and we just had the, um, I've been in a lot of political science classes. And this is the video they add about the elect electoral college. But this is how you type in whatever. This just searches in YouTube. This is the video from the electoral college we want. We click continue. You can put some verbiage above it or below it. I'm going to leave it blank for now. And I'm just going to click continue. And it'll ask me, where do you want to put this? Okay, let's go ahead and put this. I want to put it at the very top. Um, at the top level, just so we can see it. So now you can see I just added this video, the Electoral College. If I click on it, it's going to open up a YouTube video. We can play it. Can play it. In the US, we don't directly vote for our president or vice president. Instead, we use something called the Electoral College vote for one of them. But in actuality, when
So that's how that works. So now I'll go ahead and minimize that. I'll close that. And so then I, I selected, that's how easy it is to add material from YouTube. You can add anything from uh, Google Docs or whatever. I'll go ahead and hit the trash button. That gets rid of it. So, but you can, the point is you can put material anywhere that you want in there. And I'm probably forgetting a few things to show you, but I wanted to hit the highlights for you. Oh, oh, yes. Um, okay. Here's the other thing I learned from TCU students. We have in here, you're going to have flashcards. And flashcards, are, there would be several in, in the book. Um, and you know how this works. You flip the card, get the answer. Students can create their own card. And what's happened at TCU, this is quite interesting. Before a test, um, some instructors give students, okay, here are your topic areas that we're going to cover. Um, and so the students will go over, and what they end up doing is they go into the ebook itself. Now, this is the full book. Uh, you can't really, that's just like a PDF file. They go to this search index and they'll search for, oh, let's say, um, I'll just, uh, ASIM, we'll type in, whoops, type in the term and it will show us everywhere that term occurs in the book, if it's in the homework, um, if we search for the Electoral College and I didn't erase that the video or delete it, it would find that video. So it obviously finds everything that you put in there as long as you have it named the same way. So the students will look at this say, okay, well, uh, I need to look at this term. It's in the book here. They'll open up the book. They'll find where that term is. And if they don't have a flashcard on it, that's <laughs> what the students at TCU have done. They will simply copy this material and they'll say add flashcard create a new card whoops I need to copy that material what they'll do is they'll copy material that's in the book and then they'll just create their own flashcard um, they'll put a, a, a term on there um, this is just one of the ways that they use it so it's hard to talk and type at the same time it, at any rate you get you get the idea um, so they can create whatever flashcards they need, and you'll have flashcards are set up already in there for all the chapters, but they can create their own. I thought that was something kind of interesting, but the students were using this electronic index to drill down uh, to find out more information about something they were interested in or wanted to study. Um, you can also increase the font size. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can also do that with the Control Plus button on your computer. So you can, you can make it bigger or smaller. Let's see. So that's, I, I'll go ahead and wrap this part of the video up. Um, that's my tap. Now, if we go into a services site, this is the uh, site we talked about earlier this morning on the phone, Cengage.com slash services. I'm going to show you how to use this site. Uh, pretty much everything you need is going to be right here. So if you click on mind tap, it's going to take you to uh, the getting started page. Now here's where this gets um, gets important. We want to know, this is going to be general information about MindTap. There's videos, basically anything that you want to do um, is going to be right here. Um, getting started with MindTap, this is a, a, a video, it's a, web, a, a, a webinar, uh, again it lasts about an hour and it goes into more detail on MindTap. Uh, but we have, we're in D2L so we want to click on Brightspace that's your D2L. And so now you have, this is a wonderful user, this uh, user guide. This has everything that you need step by step on how to integrate your course. It's about 30, it's 30 pages long. Um, that's a good user guide. You can download it right there. But most of what you're going to need is right here. Creating your course in Brightspace and D2L. Five minute video that shows you how to create it. Uh, then you have what's called deep linking. That's, um, the video explains that. Um, Again, more webinars. Now, that's wonderful. Here's where it gets kind of neat. If you click on student, you have a student user guide. You also have, this is a video, MindTap on Brightspace. It shows students how to register and log in with D2L. Now, if I click on it, um, you, can, you, you can play the video, but you can copy this link. And I recommend you do this. Click on copy link. And then when you go into your syllabus, I'll uh, open up a Word document here. 
post this in your online syllabus. Post this link in your syllabus. And then when students click on it, um, they can click on it. It'll, it'll take them straight to the video that they need on how to register and log in. Uh, I ran some tests with this last semester. We had, there were 12 students in one class um, and we didn't say anything to them. We just put the link in there. Uh, the next day we checked and 11 students had already registered. No one called the instructor. No one asked for help. Uh, this is a really good training video for that. So again, pretty much everything that you'll need for Brightspace uh, and integration is going to be in here. Again, you have the instructor side and you have the student side. Now the next thing you might need, uh, you already know how to get all our resources. So let me, let me go back here. Let me just get to this may this question may come up a little bit if we click I, I just went back to the services page we click on see all products this is for the Cognero this is our test bank and you know how to get material from our instructor account instructor resources this is information on Cognero uh, in case you want to um, create a Cognero test Again, click on Brightspace up here, and there will be information on how to get your test into D2L or Brightspace. That's found in your Instructor Resource Center. This is the Instructor Companion site. Uh, you'll load the book. This is your uh, URL for the book to load it in here, and um, uh, this is where you get your companion, your companion site. And when you're in there, um, in the book companion site, this is where you get your PowerPoints, instructor's manual. There are some test banks in here, but they're not Cognero. So in here, I've also loaded uh, the Cognero test banks are here as well. So you have that for the, this title. So all of that material is there. So I, I know I went through this really fast, but again, you want to click the middle button here. This is your back arrow for the learning path. Um, I hope that helps. All right, call me if you have any questions at all. Uh, I'm a phone call away, and I'll do whatever I can to make this process uh, as simple for you uh, and as efficient as for you. And if you need me to come to your class to show students, to give them a brief demonstration, I'm available to do that as well. Thank you.